this that we belong to you and that you are our God, our Father. We bless you with our whole heart. And we come to you desiring to learn of you and to worship at thy foot too. We know we went to the heavens when we began to sing by that Lord you crush principalities. While we are yet ascending, the chorus was stopped. And now, Lord, we pray thee, let the anointing of worship be strong. Back then, Lord, no choir, no special thing, but the anointing, the tambourine was inside of us, as it is written in Scripture. The tambourine was there. And we, we released and great sound came up to you of thanksgiving, praise, and appreciation. No one had a hidden agenda. We bless you, our Lord. And now, Lord, we pray thee, bring us beyond what we are known. We do not say return us back to, to that time because you have taken us forward. But while your precious word is coming to us expressly, may we remember that in, the, in, 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 in your sight, the things of prayer and of worship are reckoned as highest. And when our teaching and preaching are a proclamation of the same glory that we have ascribed to your holy name. Now we come to the teaching of the world. We pray thee, help us. Help us, Lord. Let the anointing of the Spirit rest upon us mightily, upon our minds, particularly upon our ears and upon our eyes. Open our ears that we might hear aright, that we might see aright, that we might become fruit of the message brought unto you. Thank you, Father. We know that there are people that are joined to us in the service. We pray, Almighty God, that the things we have desired for ourselves might be their experience as it shall be our they shall be our experiences in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord thank you father blessed be your name forever and ever amen and amen and amen we are going to the second teaching on divine regulation respecting given. What we shall do is that um, we shall take the reading. Time is taken to prepare these outlines. And the purpose is for us to be able to go through after the teaching and for us to be able to follow the teaching properly. We are not going to take any of the readings of the main reference text, which we shall use also for another teaching on giving. And of course, the teaching of giving will go until there's a lifting up in the spirit that we have addressed all aspects of this great subject. So we go to the introduction. In the Holy Scriptures, giving is taught as a responsive awareness that flows from knowing 
God's people are in covenant of blessing. We are in a covenant of blessing. For when he brought us to himself, it is that we might minister to his need. And his need is this. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And I let them have what? Dominion. So the need of God is to wipe out from all creation all those terrible things in the sea, in the air, and the creeping and crawling things, which are symbolic of wicked spirits and wicked natures. Let us make mine our image and after our likeness. Then, of course, after that, he created man. That part that only God can do. He created man in his image. The likeness is the, is, has to do with the making. He created man in his image. He does not say, and after his likeness, because that requires us to be partners together with him. That is God. If God needs us, why do we think we do not need one another? We do. We do. And more things can be said in the light of that, but we continue. After he has created man, he now brought the man to be partner with him in the task of having dominion over the fish of the sea all the local spirits and crocodile spirit and all those vagabonds. But in bringing us to that work, he blessed us and God blessed them and said, is that not? If it is, shout the loudest, amen. Yeah. What does that indicate? It means blessing is an equipment and we shall eat that food one day what that indicates. And God blessed them and said, he blessed in situ, receiving there and there something God brought into the man, collective man. Great things. And he came. That blessing came as multiple suit. Glory! You want to see the first man? In now we after we after we after and all of them called by the name of precious stones. Glory! That's wonderful. And then he spoke to them. He spoke to them. I said, these that I'm saying are good instructions and food. So he said to them, be fruitful and multiply instructional. And replenish yourself. Replenish yourself. It's food. What I speak to you is food. And then if you see anything staying up in it, it, itself in you, subdue it. So the earth replenish the earth and subdue it refer first and foremost to the blessings. Remember, it is prophetic, speaking of all times. So we come back to what we are saying, that from, it's a responsible awareness that flows from knowing God's people are in a covenant of blessing with him. And so we thankfully commit to advancing the interests of God and his kingdom. So they are closely associated. This is treated as a manifestation of a living reverential fear of the awesome God. Most definitely, the obedient are all the more blessed, fitted with more glory, fitted with all the things, riches, both natural and spiritual. They are all the more blessed to enable them grow in the duty love of giving.
Let everybody say, I will grow. Uh -huh. I'm going to talk about giving. Is that why only seven persons answered? I will grow. In the duty love of giving. All right. The Bible teaches us so much about giving. I like in five specific subject areas. Believers should be well acquainted with, with how God expects his covenant children to faithfully exercise themselves in all aspects of the ordinance of giving. More so as it's, as it's related to the gospel age church. The five areas indicated earlier are tithes, offering, arms giving, first fruits, and varying forms of thanksgiving. We had brief discussion on the first three last week. We will now go into the fourth and fifth and then make a review of all five of them, time permitting. And of course, in talking about the first fruit, there is a verse of scripture that leads us. It says, Proverbs 3, 9, uh, I, I, I wouldn't know, Joshua Jes Joseph, um, is battling with his uh, something. Okay, is that so? Let's read from the Bible from the this thing, Proverbs 3 9 only. Put to us, but I'll read it here. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. This is the provision in God's word, it's in the, in the book of Proverbs. The counsel of God gives us wisdom to live by. This was written by Solomon, a man made wise by God. So it's a counsel given that we should draw upon. Because it makes us, wisdom is a seed. It makes us wise. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of thy increase. How do you respond to this clear instruction? It is by looking at the true Hebrew words that are key in this passage. They are in your heart outline, they are given in caps, uppercase, substance and first fruit. What does the word substance mean here? The word substance denotes wealth and sufficiency. So, honor the Lord with your wealth and sufficiency. But it gives us understanding that there is an endowment in the primary and secondary forms so that wealth and sufficiency are actually tertiary. It is, there is a history behind wealth and sufficiency. So it says here, it connotes generative power, power to generate. I have a son, he lost his father many years ago. Father may have gone in 2004. And when he graduated, he didn't have any money, not got a job. And I sent to him 10,000 naira. But he has generative power and vigor. These are primary gifts from God. He has generative power. He didn't eat it. And where he lived, there was ice cream. And ice cream is sweet, giving yourself a treat. But he did it. He went, was in Ekuma. 
Maria Joseph Virginia was born and raised. And he took the 10,000, gave it as a deposit to the person who sells gas. And he began, Sister Faye knows the story, but she's he's closer to Sister Faye than me. All mothers are closer to their children. So, but he sold gas and this thing and built up his capital. I can tell you more, but for the purpose of this message, he built up such a big capital for me, he bought a car and was, uh, was supporting. He said, when the father wanted to die, he said, take care. So both the elder sister and the younger one, he, he considered himself their father. Bought the car. And when he was going to marry, he didn't ask for uh, palliative or support. He had enough money to marry big. How many children has he now? One or two? Uh, one, one child. No way! From 10,000. What does that mean? That young man has generative power. And people do not know how to spend money. When people go for youth service, who can I say? Save. Save. Whatever you, money you save, I will double it when you come from youth service. If you save 10,000 naira, you'll be giving 10,000 naira. If you save 50, you'll be giving 50. If you save 200, you'll see. But I know you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Generative power. Inherent graces. In Deuteronomy 8.18 8, puts it this way. It is the Lord that God that gives the word power to get where. He doesn't give wealth. If you put on, uh, raise your, your pillow in the morning and you saw uh, 600,000 in Cliff's notes, before you give thanks to God, ask everybody you know in the fellowship. And if nobody acknowledge that he brought it and gave it to your wife or husband to put it up, just burn it. Why are you doing with those straight money? You don't need it. Money is not your source. God is your source. And when he gives you those primary things, they generate wealth. You see, he says in blessing Joseph, he said, the blessing of the womb and the blessing of the breast. The womb is idea that, that your generative graces can, can use to produce a business venture. And the blessing of the breast is the financial supplies that will translate that business idea into productive business. Amen. So God does it. So in the word substance, it means it means uh, wealth and sufficiency. But they are brought about by power that is generative power and vigor, not being tired. Which, when deployed in wisdom, achieves productive efficiency. Bless, when you bless them, bless them to have, God say, give me money. Give me what I did. Give me generative power. And because of the things that the Lord will do as you give, many here shall have generative graces imparted unto them. I thought you would say amen. Yeah. 
Amen. Where is uh, Uyi? I thought somebody would stand up and say, Amen. And Uyi is, like, Uyi is likely to do that. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Anyhow, that is it. On the other hand, first fruit denotes first, best, chief, principal thing. So in between these two words, substance and first fruit, you'll be able to know what is indicated in Proverbs 3, 9, where it says, honor the Lord with thy substance. You don't have, you, you, you see, you, if, if you, as we go, you, if you honor God with yourself, you will be shocked. I don't want to stay too long. I will have given you. But let's go on. Your business should not have the same turnover every year. You should somewhere along the line, you are cheating yourself by not honoring the Lord with, the, with, with your substance. With the first fruit of your increase, there must be increase for you to give a first fruit. He promises to give the increase. Can you see somebody who is a farmer eating his seed? Hello? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you eat the seed, what will you sow? So come with me now to this. So that we take it. So it did not first best chief principal thing. In practical terms, it connotes what that which is honorably offered in thanksgiving to God. And let's continue to read. Want to go for what one has begun to read. Hey, stop it there. That is it. For what one has begun to read, you, you put it to the session. You see, it's yielding. It's the first fruit. It's the first thing. It's not the close of the business cycle. It's the first fruit. Then you take a, 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 a fat proportion. As you will it, there is no law as to what you take. According to you, You can be able like, or you can be king like. The choice is yours. And in between these two typical extreme, extremes of, of the case, there are many positions to give, indicating, ah, God has begun to give me fruit. In this, and when you give, you are honoring God. Let's look at um, um, Proverbs 3 9 again. Say, Honor the Lord with thy substance. And we say that it has two levels. For what one has begun to read, why what? anticipating let's read it together let's start from it connotes in practical terms want to go in practical terms it connotes that which is honorably offered in thanksgiving to god for what one has begun to reap while anticipating robust revenue at the close of the business sector is that which is at the close of the business level that has a regulation as to what you must give. But well, this other one, it, it is free. You can, you may not acknowledge that God has given you. Say, I, I do not know now if I begin to give to this. But let me expand my farm by putting this one there. Mm -hmm. That's wisdom. And 50% of that wisdom is natural craftiness. You must honor God with your substance. 
indicating that you give him thanks because this has come by powers that he has put in you. That young man, 10,000 naira. Sponsoring the younger sister. Keeping the elder one. And has a business. And taking care of the... He is self-employed. I just love that boy. Okay, so we go on for ease of understanding. Title is required in the second part at the close of the business uh, circle. If yours is every six months, every nine months, but it's typical to be one year. Every month you'll be given according to the law. I'm talking now of those of old in Israel. Every month they will be given as they choose. But at the end of the business cycle, when profit is determined, they will give a tithe. Did you get that? Is it clear? That it how it was in the Old Testament time, providing a good basis for understanding how it applies to us today. For ease of understanding, tithe is required in the second part at the close of the business. But every month, since the business we have not brought it to a close, except if you are. You have a system of the where business closes every month. Otherwise, you give and continue to give according as your heart tells you. For each of us, that that is required in the second part. Why a really generous giving is what is befitting to the first part. It would be according to what seems good to the individual. And uh, we go to varying forms of thanksgiving. Varying forms of thanksgiving. The first part cannot be measured in terms of money. It is the most precious part. It cannot be measured in terms of money. This is the individuals and God. Let's read it together. I want to go. Giving God the glory due his name should be what? Habitual, daily, and on the increase. This we do by the fruit of our lips in what? Worship, praise, and expressions of joy before the Lord. In what? In settings both private and congregational. These are not measurable not quantified in monetary terms. But we ask, and that is what I began to say here. The, uh, the praise, worship, adoration, and magnifying God is not getting the proper attention. Oh, we do, we, we do. You, 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 you know as a, 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 a good teacher, you, you, you understand how you relate to your students. As a math teacher, anybody who gets 85% and above is under my radar. If he makes a careless mistake, the school thing I will give him. He may finish this, for that person at 10% and, and you are praising him or her. Why? Because the, la the last boy had 5%, and he now has 10%. I said, oh! And men who had 5, 10, uh, 20% credited their maths that year. Why? They were, they were encouraged to be. But you don't be careless because you ought to get a one. And you don't become careless. By the nature of the song we sing, 
Mm. 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 It's not everything you say publicly. Anyhow, but I should be able to say this. There's no quality time of worship as it befits our spiritual age. We must worship. We must know that when we go on to God, He enables us to do the work that remains to be done. In believers gathering, where everyone is a believer in a small unit, the first thing to do after opening prayer is to move in worship. The worship will bet prayers. And you move in prayers. And then again in worship. And when the word of God comes, sometimes it is derived from what God has spoken. That is why we are closing this person. However, are we not lucky in this from both sanctified human what you and I can see? Are we not lucky in this? By both sanctified human judgment and holy examples in scriptures, thanksgiving must be the first. And it is the first, is the first of all the songs in the book of Revelation, is the first. I said, when they give thanks, the 20 and 4 uh, elders will. What, what, what is the manner of the other It's acknowledging God. That worthy, that worthy, O oh Lord. Uh, it is giving, 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 giving that is the name. To receive glory and honor and power. Glory is a fruit because he sows glory as a seed in us. And then we bring glory to him. For thou hast created all things and for pleasure. The word pleasure is the performance of your will. They are we are created that was the that was the oh Lord to receive glory of God and power for the has created all what are we there for? For that pleasure they are and we for the performance of his will. And so when those living creatures bring him thanks and honor this way, the 24 living, the 24 elders reward. Fall on their grounds and worship. Anyhow, the anointing of worship is actually on the increase. But we ought to have about five pulpits so that every preacher will preach it at the same time. So that we don't aggregate two and a half hours, two hours, 14 minutes. What are 20 minutes for prayer and worship? Then the remaining, sometimes we even close two. And it is the preaching that gets, uh, may the Lord have mercy. One and a half hours, and don't laugh, maybe two hours. <laughs> Hallelujah! Now we have not come to acts of thanksgiving, expressed in monetary terms. In this fair of giving, counsel is offered by God. No demands are made. Counsels are offered by, God, offered by God. No demands are made because it's thanksgiving. And the Lord wants it from a willing heart. In fact, in the New Testament, the 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 definitive grace of giver is that they first of all give themselves. 
but there might be meat in his house. His people are a tight unto him. Glory. Of course, we will, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be touching on this later. So when it comes to this force of thanksgiving that of monetary sort, no demand is made. Offers are made according as the people are willing, as they determine it between themselves and God. And I have listed the main forms here. First, here are the main forms. The first one is arising from vows of consecration. What you give because you vowed it or because you are, you, you are consecrating your time and energy. And then as in fasting, what you ought to have expected of, your, of yourself, you put it together for the house of God. So arising from consecration, vows of consecration. Second, appreciating God for good health. And when the house of God is in the proper condition, there are no sicknesses. Would you want to repeat that after me? Want to go? Okay, not all of you heard. So 20 of you spoke. So repeat after me. When the house of God is in good condition, there is no place for sicknesses. Joy and gladness are the things that fill the house of God. But when there is disobedience, God removes joy and gladness. And what we have is um, um, confused conditions. Um, Matthew says, do you want to be, okay, I know that is uh, sunny. Going to UBTH and back. Going to be UBTH and back. Say, I will never go to UBTH and back. Anyhow, the, the second is appreciating God for good health. Then the other one is joy and rejoicing for spiritual growth. Then all of the rest are festivities. End of the year festivity, end of season festivity, and all the personal work festiv festivities. Hmm. Are you good? The Lord shares in the proceeds from this. All of this, the Lord shares in it. Of course, it is indicated in scripture. It, all these are from spiritual points. But the two asteric ones by scriptures are to be received by him only. So you give. If you want to be particularizing for the Lord's use, you put it there. For the Lord's use. It is important. Vows of consecration. Appreciating God for good health. God only takes them. It's God's portion. Then the other one, this is the way it is arranged. The Lord takes part. The ministries expend part for their services. Not really for themselves, but for their services. Then... The work, the offerer, in some cases, take part of it. So either God alone, or God and the, his servants, or God, his servants, his servant for their services, not for their own up, upkeep. Then for the, 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 Offer, he can take a share of it. And the needy, and for acts of arms given. But the first two are for the Lord only. The Lord bless you. So it is said, 
For the others, provisions may be made for almsgiving, for the needy, for servants of God, for their services, not a salary, for example. If you want two persons to go and uh, go to, is it Utekong? Eh? Eh? Yes. Uh, Utekon, yes. To, to uh, take some uh, spiritual survey, to survey the land for the crusade we'll be having there. We could provide for the petrol or transportation money from the house of God. That's what I mean for the services of the servants of God. Now it will appear we are NEPA, but we will pay NEPA bills at the end. That's for the services of the house of God, not directly for the servants. And when we buy petrol, or when we print this, we do not say because the person who prints it is a believer, I say, ah, uh -uh. don't you know it's for the house of God? Why you say we should pay? No. Okay, so these are the varying forms of thanksgiving, and you may need to go over them and again and again. As always, because no demands are made, what is given must be determined between you and God, as with all other given, except yes, specific instructions are given. We are done with today's service. Only two we are taking. And we would have reviewed all five, what we did last week, and what uh, we are doing this week. But we will prepare ourselves for uh, the further teaching I'm given by reading these six helps. Therefore, your private meditation but these six helps that enables you to come to clearer understanding because after the teaching of uh, last week, um, some sister said, uh, so uh, are we to give title? We are not to give title. I said, I
beyond. These are able to minister to the body. Then the second one is what? Ministry of the body to himself, not to itself, because the body is a living organism. Ministry of the body to himself. That includes all of us, the body ministers. And in one of the passages read by Brother uh, Matthew, we will find it there, speaking the truth in love, we may grow unto him in all things. So perfection is, re requires that these two levels of ministry be functional. So you will find this distinction necessary to take to heart. That's number three. Number four, what to do? On that goal, those in the first category, that those who minister to the body, who, are, who have come to the estate of five foot, may generally be required to work for what? A living. But some have ministry constraints, require them either not to work at all, or to work all the time, or not to work at all. And then these variants are there for Peter who did not work. But there was no arrangement made for them by the church to pay him. God pays all his servants. Say so. Robustly. Ah. A servant of God cannot be a beggar. Never. Ah. Lifts up his soul to God. And God undertakes for him. Amen? Amen? So Peter was catered for by God himself. It's not like uh, federal, state, governments and multinationals that pay peanuts to, to their something. We are still struggling about minimum wages. When it went to 300, it fell back to that. And they say, say, there's one state not too far from here, about seven hours drive from here. We made it 70, but they say the actual money is 35. That's not God. Let everybody chorus now. God takes care of all his servants. Shout it. So Peter did not need to have to beg. Even though he didn't work for a living, and they were quite some of the apostles. But there was an apostle who felt that it should give God all because Jesus Christ gave all. And so he maintained a business outfit that enables him to move from place to place practicing it. But even there, in 1 Corinthians 9, he says, mm -mm 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 -mm. do not muzzle the ox that treaded the corn, but take care of your servants, because of, of the servants of God, your means take care of them. But there's no direct regulation of how to take care of them. So what happens? When you read through the five things, you will know that when you move into some certain types of giving, the Lord will direct you what to do. In fact, the training of the Israelite is that when he has given the first one tenth, he will take the another one tenth and practice how in self-discipline to minister to the needs of, of people. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? Yes. All right. So, Paul was a tent maker. So wherever he, he went to, he would establish his business there and cater for himself. He said, my own hands have ministered to me of my necessity. And no man shall take this boast from me. He said, but the Bible says, do not muzzle the ox that treaded the corn. And then he asked, is God... Caring for 
animals to have provision. I said, no. This is a prophetic scripture so that the people who labor, you see the labor, not the people who tie their, their uh, towel by 12 o'clock say they are on full-time ministry. Forget it. They never end well. They cannot. A man can deceive himself and certainty will stare him on the face. Anyhow, forget about that. The ox, what I say, do not muzzle. Don't, don't, don't allow them to say, hey, everyone here has a conceit. I is yielding. And the wisdom to go about this thing is coming by the labors of the ox. Do not, do not muzzle the ox that what? Say, does God care for oxen? Then it says, but he says, nevertheless, I shall not use this in relating to you. Because I perceive that if I bring no expense upon you, I preach the gospel freely, ministering to my own necessity, making the gospel without charge to you. And if you want to talk about charge, it's not. You invite somebody who says, all right, let's discuss. Where are you going to put me? It must be a five-star hotel. And this is the minimum I can take as love offering, 1.5 million. If you, if you are not interested, then you are not grown enough to require my ministry. I can remember it happened. A good man, sure, but it happened in uh, um, nursing. What's the nursing something called in uh, Eku? Uh, Baptist uh, uh, Hospital. And they have a school of nursing in that place. They invited, it happened to be one of persons that are ministered with, and he told them, this is the amount I will receive. This is the hotel you give me. I can't stay in this place. I will drive from Warwick to this place. And poor students, uh, not poor students, uh, students, we are not receiving salary. They can't gather money. They say, ah, but there's another man of God in the Let's go. And they call him. And they say, what will you uh, give for your transfer? I say, don't bother. I will come. I ministered and I left. And they were shocked. Paul said, Don't invite me to come here to preach you. If you come, you will pay. Hello? We are not hearing it. Don't invite me to come and preach here in Vini Fellowship. If you invite me, you will pay. So make sure you don't invite me. I will come on my own. I put it to you, I will come on my own. Anyhow, that is an aside. So Paul said, what, what will be my expression of thanksgiving to God? If I preach the gospel, necessity is laid upon me to preach it. I don't have any right to excuse myself from doing it. For the love of God does constrain us. And we don't judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. And that we live that those who live but no longer live unto themselves, but unto him that died for them and was raised. Say, so what then is my profit? What then can I say before God that I will bring you the gospel without a charge? You say, that is the expression of thanksgiving to God. That is because when I preach the gospel, necessity is laid upon me. Praise the name of the Lord. We shall touch that. But we are saying that God caters for his. And then the house of God when they hear the word of God, shall by their own 
personal resolve know how to relate, especially if the Lord leads them. Well, no profit if God does not lead you. Five, in the Mosaic age, tithing, a limited kind of given, is a training on growing in, or in growing in self-discipline. To be able, without any constraint, to respond to generous giving in the honor of him who gave his best, even his all, ever before man was. Great example, he gave his all. And then we have to be trained that when we, when we give, we should give is a priestly service, but it's a living service. Given is living. Everybody says, given is living. Yes. And living thing grows. Yes. So we have to grow in our giving. But if we are mathematicians and arithmeticians and calculate one ten, we are in the new, but we are living in the old. And God is God is not angry about that if you use it for about five months, six months, seven months. But if after that you are not growing. Abba, God will ask you a question. Amen? All right. In line with this, we are to give ourselves to the Lord as a precursor to find the acceptable use of the grace of giving. We must first of all give ourselves. True titan prophetically as is required is that we all should yield ourselves to God. And there will be meat in God's heart. Nobody will be suffering famine of God's word. And that is the primary form. We have done with it. I didn't want to go into this because I wanted to review the five. But I could not go in because some persons had some problems with the matter of tithing in the gospel age. So let's read this, uh, the sixth one together. I want to go. Titan is not taught in the New Testament. Therefore, it is erroneous to either teach or what enforce it. It's erroneous. God will not be happy if you put a yoke upon God's people, pay your tithe. You may not bring a tithe card, but don't tell the lost people they must pay their tithe. Grace and of his fullness have we received what? Grace from grace. There's a capacity there that here and they can pray from the uh, um, uh, uh, self discipline. In any case, what type of type will you ask them to pay? One tenth or one fifth? Because under the Old Testament, it was one fifth. For one tenth was demanded specifically to minister to the, to the priest. But the remaining one tenth. And the second one tenth must be expended monthly, dispersing it according as you see fit on that door. Amen? Don't enforce it. It's erroneous. You can't force it. You cannot say, because the Lord said uh, we should teach us, give. He said, yes, aha, we have found the reason now. You must give time, give time. That is, that is. Send these people backward. People should grow out of uh, fixed rules and know that they are individually responsible to God to give an account of the blessings of God upon their lives. Teaching of tithe in the New Testament is erroneous. It may seem convenient. Well, I tell you, it's erroneous. You can't enforce it. Why do you want to enforce slavery? Why do I call it so? It is a forced discipline. When you require it in the age of grace, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And of his fullness, have we received what? Grace for grace. If you are soundly saved, you'll be saved to your pocket. It's, it's not going to be any, any uh, struggle. 
It's not going to be a struggle. Teach the word, and the people will move in that which God requires of them. Now let's start reading 6 again. Want to go? Titan is not taught in the New Testament. Therefore, it is erroneous to ever teach or enforce it. It is mentioned in the first four books only as was binding on the people under the Old Testament before the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The fact that it is, you see it in the first four books doesn't mean, say, is this not New Testament books? Erroneous. Jesus Christ was exercised under the Old Testament. He could pay tight. But then he said, even then, say, do the people who do this require uh, levy and taxes from, from their children? Say, no. He said, therefore, the children are free. Don't think in any way that you are going to, to suffer want in the work of God if people don't give tight. The Bible says that five women, five, 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 you eight, one, two, three, minister to Jesus' necessity and the necessity by the disciples who are following him every are not walking. That the women decided to follow him wherever he's going and provided for them. They came from a rich background, but the power of the gospel has touched their hearts. When the gospel touches your heart, it's a, a simple matter. He that has given the heart, is it the money will not give? Ask if he, eh? when he receives salary, he gives me all. Because he has given his heart to me. Hallelujah. He doesn't even know. He doesn't go to the back. Where he gets a salary, with a good hope will take it. If, you, if a man's heart is captured, his pocket is nothing. So in Luke 8, 1 to 3, we have actually finished. We have finished about 30 minutes ago, 45 minutes ago. What's the time now? Huh? Oh, that's the time we should be closing. Anyhow. Ah, my son. Luke 8, 1, 2, 3. All right, let's open it. Are you there? Okay, begin to read it before I get there. One, two, go. That it went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve we are with him. And certain women which have been healed of evil spirit and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Eros Steward, and Susanna, and many others which minister unto him out of their substance. In any case, we will pay him time. He is from the tribe of uh, Judah. Our priests we are not of the tribe of uh, Judah. So he didn't receive tithes of the people. But God arranged that he should be kept up for by a voluntary arrangement of the people. Trust Jesus. He wouldn't do that. One day he came, the women were not around. I'm sure they went to market and said, you pay your tax now. Or we'll tow your vehicle, pay your tax now. <laughs> you know what it means to tow you. Man, you didn't park in the wrong place, but they come to tow your car. There are tax collectors. Pay your tax now. And they, they, say, they say they want to come and uh, uh, apprehend us. They came for money and we don't have money. Then he said, come. Anyway, he told them a few things. 
and say, then the other, the children say, he say, you, just go to the river, it's just, there's the, cast your hook, your hook into the sea, and bring forth the first fish. Open it, you shall find money inside. Use it to pay for your tithe, your tax, and my tax. Amen! It will be, it, it will be, it can cater for itself, but for us, this scripture was written. Praise the name of the Lord. Galatians 4, verses 3 and 4 are quite useful in this connection. I think verse 4 is quite specific on this. Galatians 4, verse, verses 3 and 4. You know that Jesus Christ was, was, uh, was um, exercised under the Old Testament. That is why he did many things the way he did them. Because all the rigorous requirements of the Ten Commandments required the power of a perfect man to fulfill them. So he was revealed to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness and confirmed by his resurrection from the dead. So he lived according to all the great dictates of the Old Testament. He lived according to them all. So he could talk to you tight tights and cumin and all that. And talks about tight here. Forget it. He was under the Old Testament. But when he resurrected, he announced the gospel. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Galatians. Okay, let's start from verse 4. Verse 1. Now I say that the hair, as long as it's a child, Besides nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but under tutors and governors, placed under discipline, until the time appointed of the father. There's military discipline, which is forced. There is mutual discipline, which is agreed in a, a group or an association. This is what we agreed to do. That's mutual discipline. They like it. It's okay by them. So they are enforcing. Then there is the self discipline, the highest of discipline. It's not forced discipline. And tithing is as like a forced discipline in its first part. God enjoyed it to train the people to appreciate what they have. Amen. Verse 3. Even so, when we, we are children, we are in bondage under the elements of this of the world now let's see verse 4 together i want to go but when the the fullness of time was come god sent for his his son made of a woman made under the law it was made under the law that 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 that, that, is, that is why he kept the old testament and never appointed the woman the women we are there drinking Ministry is this. If you receive ministry, you can give ministry. Early, where there was 12 wells and 70 palm trees. As the river flows, trees of witness must be there. And those women who were moving, there was an anointing upon them to preach the gospel. Are you listening to it? But none of them was chosen in the 12th. None of them was chosen in the 70th. And some look at this and say, women are not required to be preachers. Otherwise, Jesus Christ will be. He was acting under the Old Testament. But when he died and was raised up from the dead, that veil was torn open. And the first woman to preach the full gospel was a woman. I thought you should shout hallelujah. How can you be where Christ is preaching? For three and a half years, and there's no anointing on you. Abba. Just give me anybody here. Let him stay with me for two years. He will be a preacher. 
Have you seen somebody following Jesus for three and a half years? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they we are all in one accord in one place. And the Lord poured upon them. Out of that was the anointing of the apostles. Out of prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, and other greats. These ones that have been following Jesus Christ everywhere, hearing the life giving word, the life impart, impart, imparted word, drinking of the Holy Spirit. What, what say you? They move in prophetic ministry. Blessed be God. We can never say women are not called to the ministry just as much as we cannot say Titan is a gospel church somewhere. And I'm saying it with all degree of responsibility. You will give and you will surprise yourself in giving. Why? Because the grace is released. Say there will be persons whose giving will be of the fourth class. Honoring God with, their, with the substance and with the first fruit of their increase. They will give beyond all boundaries. They will be centers of distribution. All around. If you want to be a center of distribution, stand up and I will tell you that you are blessed and what you need to start doing. Would you be a center of distribution? Yes. Begin to give now more than you've been giving before. That's the thing that will qualify you to be a center of distribution. Hallelujah! Yes. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord increase his hold upon your life. May you be able to say, We must give all to Christ. Christ gave his all to us. He poured his soul on to death to redeem us, redeem us unto God. What must we say? We must give our all to God. Christ gave his all to us. Christ poured out his soul unto death to redeem us unto God. We must give all to God that we feel persuaded in the place of communion. The all is not all that you have. But all you are led to give, and give it joyfully in the name of Jesus Christ. But if you say, I want to be helped, I do not know how to give, train yourself by the use of the tithe. Move to the use of the one-fifth and move beyond mathematics in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your hand upon your head. I want to pray again. Holy Father, we thank you for all we have received of you. Your instruction, giving us a lead, was that there will be centers of distribution. Single persons here and there who will finance the work of the gospel. And there shall be no lack in God's house. Because many shall be centers of distribution. We all will give. We will prosper in your sight. Our giving will be a living experience. The seed becoming a fruit will provide us with more seed to sow. So we sow with an expectation to reap. Almighty God, when we give this afternoon, let all give expecting to receive. Let all give according to as they have proposed in their heart before coming, or as they will propose in their heart in the few minutes that will be allowed everyone. Thank you. Oh, Father, thank you. Ah, yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
parts of this goodly sign, the oil of the grace of giving is coming upon every head. Receive in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. Blessed be God forevermore. In Jesus' name. Now, for two minutes, bow your head and be quiet within you. And discuss your giving with God. And always do so before you come for service.